You know it'd be really, really funny? What if I beat a developer to their own announcement? Motorsport games have accidentally revealed their complete business strategy. Their plan is to not release a series of hardcore racing simulators to capitalize on the lack of a dedicated NASCAR, IndyCar, BTCC, or Le Mans game on the market, but rather they've snatched up these licenses to try and capitalize on the NFT fad. This, in my opinion, is why NASCAR 21 shipped in the state that it did, and there has been very little effort to whip the game into anything beyond a minimum viable product. The point is not to make a good game, but rather to push a game out there that acts as an avenue for players to buy NFTs. Motorsport games are attempting to hire some sort of NFT or cryptocurrency specialist to help them implement crypto and NFTs into all of their racing simulators. It's likely this is how they acquired these licenses in the first place, promising a get-rich-quick scheme through the use of NFTs. This may also explain why brands such as NASCAR and IndyCar have not jumped ship from motorsport games after seeing the launch of NASCAR 21, which was a disaster. They see this entire venture as an NFT scheme and don't really care as much about what the video game is actually like. And it's not just a job posting that implies that this is the company's plans. CEO Dmitry Koskov of Motorsport Games has already been conducting interviews about this. It just suspiciously has never made it back into the sim racing sphere. Uh, and uh, as everybody's tracking already some uh, progress in this, uh, I believe blockchain and crypto will continue to make its way into the gaming. And of course, we'll push the envelope and introduce some innovative things that uh, hopefully the fans did not predict yet, uh, but would be excited by. And there's a reason that despite claiming to care about the fans so much and the fans of their games being their number one priority, more sport games have not told their fans about this yet their fans would tear them a new asshole and swear to never buy their games again. For example, EA straight up backed away from NFTs due to player outrage and said we're basically not going to do it. When Ubisoft tried to implement NFTs into a Tom Clancy game, they sold just 18. Whenever Hot Wheels posts their NFT collections on their Instagram feed, all of the comments laugh at them. Forbes magazine is also starting to write articles that say things like interest in NFTs and the metaverse is falling fast. So there's probably a reason why they don't want sim racers to know about this yet. Instead of openly telling sim racers about their plans for upcoming racing games, what they do is arguably more devious. They have curated their own corner of the internet for themselves, so people can't ask too many questions about what's going on here. And the more they curate, the more it looks like there's a bunch of good press surrounding them when people are actually really pissed off. For example, whereas Race Apartment has been a staple of the sim racing community for about 15 years now, and is where pretty much everyone goes to get news on upcoming racing sims, or download mods, or simply chat about racing games, Motorsport Games wasn't satisfied with this news platform, and instead created their own news platform, called Traction.gg. In fact, they don't even want to acknowledge that this major sim racing news site exists at all. When NASCAR 21 launched, they didn't even bother giving Race Department a review copy, which is pretty much customary in the industry. The site is literally identical to Race Department, but it serves an important purpose. Instead of showing investors or potential partners a 20-page shitstorm on Race Department where people swear not to buy their games, they can instead show them a fake Race Department that they created themselves. I've also found a lot of strange stock analysis articles that encourage people to buy stock in motorsport games, despite the company's stock price cratering since they've entered the public market. And this advice from both 2021 as well as 2022 just being extraordinarily bad. This also extends into very strange television interviews in which they'll go on like market shows and conduct interviews where the host claims the company is growing exponentially while simultaneously showing a picture of their stock graph where it just shoots downwards. So what has to happen that you'll continue to do so well and grow? No, you're not hearing shit, nor is there a gas leak in your apartment. This is genuinely what the hostess just said is doing well and growing, a stock that has cratered since it entered public offering. And she's making these comments while simultaneously there's an abundance of footage on YouTube showcasing this company's product falling apart. Coupled with their statements that 81 million people supposedly watched their R Factor 2 League, it's like this company frequently invents their own reality. And they've done such a good job of it that people are actually getting duped. Uh, if you go on stocktwits.com and just scroll through the Motorsport Games tag, there are people who have claimed they've never seen anything like this in their life because somehow the full story of this company has not gotten back to them yet. 
they genuinely believed this was a successful video game company and are now wondering what in the actual fuck is going on. Meanwhile, we're sitting here on random sim racing forums with a better picture than these guys have had listening to professional stock analysts. The reason I'm so passionate about this story and have researched it to these lengths is because I'm a lifelong NASCAR fan who just wants a good NASCAR game to play after work each day. Instead of getting a good NASCAR game, having been starved for several years, this development team that just kind of spawned out of nowhere has been preying on the goodwill of NASCAR fans as well as IndyCar fans, Le Mans fans, and Touring Car fans to a lesser extent and are using it to potentially try and run some sort of investment and NFT scheme, which is really fucked up. 